good morning. How are you today? Good morning. I'm feeling I'm feeling okay. Um, it's been 24 hours since um, I had the, the surgery, and Dr. Stackniak did a great job. The original pain that I was feeling and uh, weakness that I was experiencing uh, have all disappeared again, and so that's good. But I am having quite a bit of throat pain from the incision and the uh, relocating of all the organ systems in my neck. So the pushing of the, of the esophagus and the pushing of the trachea over and all of that uh, that was done is uh, quite painful. So um, that's what I'm feeling now. I'm having difficulty swallowing, um, difficulty uh, taking a deep breath. So um, I've been working with the inspirometer and I'm going to demonstrate to you all how to use this thing because a lot of people use it incorrectly. But basically, uh, you inhale and you get this little device right here, this little blue button. You want to keep it between the arrows and uh, get the big slide to go all the way up to 4,000. That's your goal. So I think you can see through it okay. So we'll give this a try. If you go too fast, then you won't get the full inspiration of your lungs because it takes more time. So if you go too slow, you won't get you won't get to the target. All when right? you suck in, you don't blow into it. No, you don't blow into it. You inhale. It's not really a sucking. It's not a mouth. Yeah. It's inhaling. And this just keeps your lungs uh, fluid free, and when you're not moving around as much, and keeps you from getting pneumonia and things like that while you're more sedentary. Look at you go. Yeah, so you want to get that all the way up, and um, and I'm able to do that. And so I do this uh, a couple of times or three times an hour, and it's preventing uh, mucus from uh, from building up in my upper trachea or lower trachea or lower respiratory system at all. Um, I've had quite a bit of pain medicine. Uh, I've got the the uh, patient-controlled analgesia with morphine, and I did. Uh, I did make a mistake last night. I decided that I, I was having too much pain and so I wasn't remembering to click the button often enough. So I, I took my cell phone and I set a timer to go off every 10 minutes because that was uh, the uh, minimum amount of time that needed to elapse before I could use the uh, patient-controlled analgesia. Well, turns out after a while I was feeling pretty good and I just kept hitting that button hitting that button and then I fell asleep and uh, before I knew it I had the nurses in here putting oxygen on me because I had used it too often so uh, De decreases your respiratory effort yeah, so it, his uh, oxygen sats had dropped right my oxygen saturations were beginning to fall so fortunately uh, they all they had to do was just put oxygen on me and my my saturation came right back up so I, I was never in any dangerous areas but um, don't do that. If you're, if you're in the hospital and they give you a patient-controlled analgesia device to push the button when you're feeling pain, don't set your phone to remind you that you can push it every 10 minutes or however long your time is automatically because that's not how it's designed to be done. So shame on me for doing that. Uh, but I had a wonderful nurse and I have wonderful nurses tonight and today too. And uh, We're so, hoping to go to a regular room today. Yep, yeah, going to get out, out of, of the here. ICU. Obviously they let me eat again and have been very gracious and, and, and uh, his bananas are his favorite so I brought him some from the hotel and I had grits for breakfast with a little bit of uh, uh, looked like a uh, kiwan but I asked for uh, chia seeds but it could have been chia seeds no it, it was a, I did have raisins um, but I think they left the other I just put some brown sugar so I had a little brown sugar and a little uh, some raisins in two orders of grits and then some coffee, and I had a little bit of fruit too. And so, and now the darling wife has brought me some bananas, and I'll get to eat those this morning too. So I'm pretty excited about that. But um, right now, my pain control looks very good, and uh, this drain here, if I can find, I can't Does turn my head. Slow down some. Here, I'll get it. I can't see if I can find it. Here's the JP. Yeah. Okay. So uh, yesterday, after yesterday evening after surgery, there were uh, 15 cc's in here, and then this morning there were 10 cc's, and 
Dr. Stagniak was ready to pull it out and I really I asked her to please leave it in a little bit longer I feel comfortable with it and she said no problem so she's leaving it in for me overnight again I'll take it out in the morning or we'll remove it in the morning but all this does this little drain goes into the the space where they did the work and and uh, prevents any accumulation of any blood so um, I just I'm just you know was having of all the dreams and all the things that you go through and you know what's going to happen that's going to go wrong uh, one of the things that I just thought could possibly go wrong was that the drain would stop working and I would develop a large hematoma and then she would have to go back in and drain it and I, I know that's probably silly because it's, it's going well but sometimes when you're talking about your own self and your own body and and how things make you feel you, you know you have to express those things and and uh, you know who knows so anyway she said that was perfectly fine so we're gonna leave that uh, out uh, take that out tomorrow and so I get to spend the morning what's left of it with the DW thanks for coming over so we did have a development yesterday um, Dr. Stagnack wants me to remain in the hard collar for um, an unspecified length of time at this point so for sure the next few weeks and maybe longer um, I think she wants to really be sure that I don't overdo it and need uh, yet further procedures done and I I completely agree with that uh, and I also think the DW expressed her concern that I was going to feel better and get out there and over start overdoing it again well, that's true it is true you don't well, sit still I won't stay still and so as a result um, one of the ways to help protect me from getting too active too soon is to put me in a hard collar. So, but this is a new frequent thing. All my friends that have had this done are in collars for several weeks yeah. after. Well, I think they're going back to the collars again. So. Keeps you from doing the squirrel right. movement if you hear a sudden sound, yeah, turning your neck real yeah. fast. Because I definitely can't it's do that. It's just habit. Unfortunately, though, um, my drawing dealing. wife is going to have to drive me to work for a while. I'll do what I need to do, babe. You'll put me in an Uber, won't you? <laughs> No, I'll drive you. Oh, you're so awesome. Um, but anyway, so things seem to be going on target. Um, I appreciate so much the prayers of uh, those of you that uh, have prayed for me. And uh, uh, I'm getting better. And I, uh, I'm, I'm excited to be getting better. I really am. So thank you so much. All right. I've tried many vitamins and this one is the best one yet. I've noticed a change in my hair, my nails, my blood pressure, and my nervous system. This is a wonderful product and I'll keep buying it. Thank you, Dr. Gilmore. Order yours today. There's an Amazon link in the description below.